Right, hello all, it's the Sivart here with a, another tutorial. This one is on 3D physics. Now, the first thing you should know with 3D physics is that GameMaker does not do it natively at all. Uh, it is only accomplished by a DLL. So this means that it is only compatible with Windows. You can't get it running on Android or HTML5 or or anything like that. It, it's only Windows Runner. But still, if you're wanting to make a Windows 3D game, then this works quite well for that. So as you can see, if I press space, I can make a rain of box fall boxes fall here, and uh, they all work properly with physics, and it ends up looking quite cool. So I'll be pointing you to the original example by the creator of this DLL, but his example was uh, was made using GameMaker 6, which is not at all compatible with uh, GameMaker Studio or GameMaker 8.1, which is why I modified it quite a bit so that it would end up working with GameMaker Studio and GameMaker 8.1. So I'll be giving you guys both those both those versions, but first I'll quickly attempt to explain. Uh, how I end up doing are uh, using the scripts now that I have them working. So we have here object control. Uh, in the creation event, it's fairly simple to start it off. You simply call the script gm init or gmn init, and that'll automatically load in all your all your DLL functions. You don't really have to do anything else. Um, so as far as uh, the creation event, then here we also have. Uh, we have to have a world, a physics world. You can create multiple, but I usually just end up using the one. So global.world equals gmn create. It just creates a physics world. And then anytime you try and change the settings of that world or like add an extra object into the world, then that's the ID you use. So then you set the world size here. So um, there's a little comment here that says uh, anything outside of the world won't be simulated, which is nice because that way, say something falls off the cliff, like one of these blocks, it won't fall infinitely. It'll hit the boundary of the room and then stop being calculated, and then it'll just stop. It'll not get calculated after that. So the only other thing in the control event that I end up doing here is um, is this script right here, GMN update. So what this does is it tells the DLL to calculate another step in the physics because all of the all of the physics objects are controlled by the DLL but it has to be updated constantly. And so that's how you end up doing that. Um so now into the actual objects, how you create them. Here is one of the box objects. So what I what I did here is um well, let's see first. You have to have a collision shape. So we create we use the GMN create box and then you have to stick the world again that you want to stick it in. And then X size, Y size, and Z size. I set that over here, so it's it's different for every box. You you saw that when I had a rain of boxes they were all different sizes. This is just to demonstrate that you can do that. So I did one plus random two on all uh sides. So that's why it's a random side. Uh, these uh, last three zeros here um, stand for the position, but I didn't set the position here, I set the position later. So after this you also need a body, so you create a body from the collision shape that we um, set earlier, so uh, this script just does that. And then we do GMN release collision, this kind of lets the DLL start messing with it, and then uh, we use um, this script function here, gmn body set auto mass matrix. This will uh, allow you to set the mass per square inch idea of the uh, of the shape. So I set it to 2. Um, you can mess around with that if you want the object to be heavier or lighter, but generally um, the bigger ones will be heavier, the smaller ones will be lighter. And then lastly here I set the position so I just used the body ID and then gave it a random position so that, again, the blocks would be randomized. So that it would be kind of a rain of blocks. But you could put it anywhere you want to. Um, in step here is where you update it. This is where you get from the DLL the position of the current block. 
So it's pretty simple here. X equals um, GM body get position body. So uh, this variable here, the zero, that stands for which variable you're trying to get. X, Y, or Z. So zero for X, one for Y, and two for Z. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory there. And then same here with rotation, except for um, the DLL gives it in radius, and GameMaker wants to use it in degrees. So that's why we use this function rad to dig, or radius to degrees, which will convert it over for you. And then in draw event, I simply I scale it to the right size, and then I draw it with its rotation and in the right position that we got from the DLL. And then that's what makes the cool, cool bouncing around because the DLL figures out where it's supposed to be, and then that's it. So with the floor, uh, it's pretty similar except for the floor doesn't move. So um, it sets the position, and then here it sets the mass. We set it to zero, so that it's a static body. That means it's not going to move. It's not going to fall. So that's why it's our floor. Because something has to be solid, otherwise everything's falling infinitely, and that's no fun. <laughs> um, and then it pretty much just does the same thing as the other one, even though you don't really have to update its position because it doesn't move. Um, so yeah, that, that's about it. it. It's fairly simple, and then adding other shapes is also quite easy. You know, you can add a cone or, or like a sphere, and it's it's pretty much the exact same process. Uh, so there, there's a massive amount of scripts that come with the DLL. So once again, I'm going to point you to the to the page of the actual creator of this DLL. Um, so there might be more information on the individual ones. I'm just trying to convert it over for you guys so that you can use it in GameMaker Studio and GameMaker 8.1, but also so that you, you can kind of use it more easy. Like it'll, you should just be able to add physics to your game right away without having to look at this massive amount of scripts and just because there's so many right it's just nuts so I kinda just narrowed it down for you so yeah so it should be pretty easy to get it started it's it's not it's not so bad so anyway and then once again we have this amazing effect with all the boxes falling everywhere so also, I mean, there are also scripts that you can use to, you know, um, set the force of an object or the torque of an object, or maybe um, you can like make a joint or a hinge or some other form. Uh, also, there's heaps of settings on like the frictions of the objects and stuff like that. But there's there's too much for me to put into one video. I may do more advanced later on. But for right now, I'll just show you guys the basics and get you guys started on this so yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on uh, 3D physics in GameMaker all versions by the way uh, anyway goodbye